we're going to do another unboxing Star Wars video with uh, Jawa James. So why don't we get the show started? All right, Yowie, uh, I'm here. Uh, I'm Jawa James. We're going to do unboxing Star Wars for uh, today's uh, November 12th. Uh, we had Star Wars Rebels last night. Uh, our co-host, Baby Jawa, is taking a nap, as she has wanted to do. So hopefully we'll get this done before she wakes up. Okay, let's look in the bag! All right, what are we unboxing this week? Uh, first, we got a postcard reminding us that uh, the Star Wars comic series Vader Down starts next week. Um, part one comes out next week. It's Vader Down number one, and then it, the story will alternate between the Darth Vader comic and the Star Wars comic, so it's a big crossover event. Uh, check that out from uh, Marvel Comics. Uh, also, we got... Uh, some cool Star Wars stamps from the UK. My friend Gary picked these up. There are a bunch of character stamps. Um, and then on, on there's also uh, a set of uh, ships and vehicle stamps. If you notice, uh, I posted on Twitter a couple days ago uh, that the there's a Resistance X-Wing fighter and a First Order tie, as well as the Millennium Falcon being the new one from The Force Awakens. What else do we have? Oh, let's look in the box. No, it's a bag, but what's in the box? It's Honey Nut Cheerios. All right. Um, yeah. You don't know the power of the dark side of the whatever that thing is. What is what is a honey stick called anyway? I don't know, but uh, why don't we uh, try some, see if they, they remind us of Honey Nut Cheerios from when we were a kid. Look at that. We got a bowl right here. Okay, let me pour. Yeah. All right, uh, let's go ahead and dig out the, the toy too. We got a droid viewer. Uh, oh boy, let me see. It's the yellow one. Its name is BU4D. It says, warning, do not look directly into the sun. So why don't we uh, open it up here and not look directly into the sun. There's also some cool uh, games here on the back. BB-8 has a secret message for you. So if you can zoom in on that, work on that while I open this. Wow. They really don't want you to get into these. All right, did you guys solve the message yet? Uh, the message, I believe, says the resistance needs your help. Okay, it's not only is it in one package, it's in a second package. Good gracious. I'm going to use my spoon here. Ah. All right, so this is the droid BU4D. I'm going to take a look here inside the viewer. Do not look directly at the sun. Oh, I see a picture of what appears to be BU-4D in The Force Awakens. That is uh, really exciting. Um, anyway, why don't we uh, have a little bit of cereal here. I think Honey Nut Cheerios, didn't they actually used to have actual bits of nut in them? Now it just says natural almond flavor. Mmm! Honey, honey, honey! Yep. Another reason we're doing this episode without Baby Jawa, she'd be all over these Cheerios right now. It would pretty much be over. So, what else happened this past week in the world of Star Wars? We had uh, the international trailer come out last Thursday or Friday, and then we had a new TV spot that first premiered on Twitter. I am going to be staying spoiler-free. We'll see how that long that lasts. I didn't watch either of those. I've seen a couple of stills. But uh, I'm trying to avoid it, so uh, yeah, don't don't talk about it, folks. All right, enough with the Cheerios. Yeah, we. What else do you want to talk about? Oh, oh, oh! New Rebels last night. Right. There's a new Star Wars Rebels last night. Wings of the Master. It was a episode focused on Hera and the introduction of one of the most iconic Rebel craft first seen in Return of the Jedi, the B-wing. So I got my old. Power of the Force viewing out. Um, what did you think of the episode? Well, I thought it was a good look at uh, Hera's backstory, and I really liked Quarry. Yeah, Quarry was a very fun character, a very proud um, starship uh, developer, uh, engineer, and great character. Good animation on Quarry as well, that, that his eyes were very expressive, his facial expressions, and it was good to see him pulled into the uh, Rebellion. It kind of odd that you know a, a character that admits that he doesn't pilot lives on a planet that is really hard for pilots to get in and out of uh, Shantipol which is a callback to the old um, expanded universe uh, 
like even in the, the, the X-Wing games, Project Shandipole was the name of the project that developed the B-Wing originally, and now it's the name of the planet, so that he's living on. But again, how did he get there? Uh, how did, you know, who feeds him? You know, it, he's got that uh, little base on top of one of those mountaintops. Um, and yeah, so, so the, the kind of a question there, but you know, we got the B-Wing. If you notice the old Power of the Force B-Wing, it looks a little different from what we saw last night. Here, yeah, we uh, have some more Cheerios. That if you remember from last night, the uh, B-Wing that we saw actually landed on this way. And so it's landing here. We're facing the other way. So, you know, is this just a, a Hasbro thing from having this land this way? Or, oops, there we go. We got the wings to fold down. We'll put the landing gear out or put them back up as we're getting ready for flight. And not so much. But, you know, we got the rotating cockpit, which is a really cool feature of the B-Wing. And, you know, we got the four engines on the back. We got all kinds of blasters and stuff. Obviously, you know, the B-Wing we saw last night was a prototype uh, that uh, was developed by Quarry. And anyone think it kind of odd that a uh, Mon Calamari would have the name Quarry? That would be calling, like, a Quarren a Mon Monkey? Mon Cali? Um, but, you know, also a reference to Ralph McQuarrie. So maybe if his first name is Ralph Mick. We'll, we'll find out someday. Uh, it would be great to see that character again. Uh, Hera, we learn a little bit more about Hera and her love of flying, why she's a pilot in the first place, that, uh, you know, she, she was, during the Battle of Ryloth, she'd look up and she'd just want to fly, want to be free, want to be away from there, and so I think that that really shows, um, you know, what, what really drives her is that, that she just likes flying, and, you know, whether it's in combat or just soaring, um, you know, you really see her happy and let loose when she's test piloting the ship, uh, through the uh, mountain spires of Chantipole. And then of course we see the really cool weaponry of it. It's almost like a mini super laser. Um, you see it tested down on the planet. You see it used against the, uh, the, the mini star destroyers in space, you know, ripping a hole in one of uh, Agent Callus' ships to his great surprise. Um, but let's talk about the tactics there that, uh, you know, at the beginning when, when Hera loses one of the Carillion blockade runners at the beginning she comes back and says I got a plan well this time we'll use two and I figure at least one of them will get through so it's basically she's saying I just lost a uh, blockade runner give me two and I'm probably going to lose one more that, that's not exactly strategic thinking maybe the revelers are like maybe you should go find uh, this fabled new starship for us um, while we think of another plan that doesn't involve losing more ships but, um, and then again, it's like, you know, they go to the blockade and what do they do? They run smack into it. It, it, you know, it's how do three Star Destroyers really blockade a planet? Can't you just, you know, instead of going like that through them, you could just go around them or, you know, fly under the planet, come around this way. I mean, even if the, the Star Destroyers are right over the landing spot of where they are, of course, if you go fly by, drop off the food, you're basically painting a big target on where those, uh, miners are, um, and saying, hey, they're, they're located here, or at least they they can get here. Maybe you should go get them, Empire. So it's a, it's a kind of a tough call, how to help people in distress when there's an Imperial blockade. Uh, you know, it, it is a trap. You know, Cal sets the trap, and unfortunately uh, for him, the Rebels managed to best him. And But we'll see. Uh, you know, interesting tactics used there. Um, we got some great scenes with uh, Hera. I, I love when the, the, the Phantom was upside down. Um, Hera's Leku were hanging down, up, as, as the case may be. Also, that landing when they came into Chantipole onto uh, Corey's landing pad, it reminded me of Rescuers Down Under when uh, the Albatross comes into land in Alice Springs and has a real short runway. Um, yeah, that... Uh, that's that's what we got. Uh, what else? You know, I really thought the episode was a lot of fun. It was really great to see the uh, the B wing back in action, um, or in action for the first time, as it may be the blade wing. Here, let's put the landing gear back down. Woo! There we go. And yeah, so you know, we had a lot of fun this week in Star Wars. What else has there been in Star Wars? Uh, 
you know, there's some comics that came out this week, but again, we have Vader Down coming out next week, so I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably be talking about that. Uh, we'll see you next time. I hear baby Jawa waking up. So with that, may the force be with you. Yowie, anything to add? All right, uh, I eat the Honey Nut Cheerios, and now it's time to eat the bee wing. No, don't eat the bee wing. But there's a Celestin inside. He looks very tasty. Um, right. Uh, Yowie, you can have the bee wing, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye, everyone.